key question for me is the future. What are some of those challenges? Where are the clients coming from these days? What's the current dynamic? We're very happy to be back again with captains and companies together. Welcome to the second stop on our Super Yacht Forum Live Tour. We are here at Via Reggio joining our friends at the 11th edition of Yare. The key question for me is the future. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? What would you like to happen? You know, we speak this question, you know, future, future is something uh, of course, that we have to program the future of the companies, of the, the investment. And very honestly, I see a good future for our business. Uh, as you know, also this pandemic situation uh, teaches us that uh, a boat is really a place safe, yep. a beautiful place to stay uh, in, uh, with safety, with uh, no stress, and looking also the, 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 the portfolio of the building ship here at the moment, we can say that uh, I see an optimistic future. But it's not depend just from the uh, companies, from the boat builder, from the ref it depends also from the help that we have to receive from uh, the uh, institutions. Yeah. Uh, we need, uh, as you can see here, we need bigger ports, we need bigger infrastructures, uh, we are a uh, uh, problem to find free dry dock to do our work. So the problem is not to find the work, is where we can be capacity located. Capacity is the issue. The capacity is, yeah. is very important. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. this is why, for example, as Technopool, we, since years, we are not just based in India region, but we try to find other places yeah. to, be the, to do the bigger yards, because both are, you know, are over 100 meters need particular infrastructure yeah. and there are not so many in demand. No, they get worse as well. Yeah. Yes, and I see that in the future we need more, 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 we need more uh, infrastructure, we need also more training people, we need uh, to invest in school, in training formation, because this work is not like uh, 30 years ago when I was already there, yeah. that was a little bit invented, now it's really a serious we say business, yeah. where we have to maintain promises done at the beginning. Thank you. Big topic is sustainability, the green issues. Is that driving refit in terms of yes. upgrading and yes. changing? We are obliged. Uh, we was, uh, I remember the first uh, to, uh, to avoid the, the, the wastewater, for example, for the washing boat uh, have to be recuperated. We was the first in the area, for example. I uh, coming from a school where I learned in south of France, and the green for us is a must. I don't, the sea is something that belongs to everybody yeah. of us. Yeah. We can't waste that. We have to be the first to avoid any damage to our world. Otherwise, our business is finished. Yeah, yeah. So looking out to the horizon, right? Future is good? Future is very good. Bravo. Grazie mille. I was interested when we were speaking earlier about whether or not yachting was part of people's DNA coming through. And but then you also said that there was, you know, lacking professionalism also. You know, do we need more professionalism or do we need to bring back that passion? You know, or are they mutually exclusive? Uh, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think the essence of um, my development, my thinking over the last couple of years is that yachting, in a sense, has um, culturally become disconnected mm -hmm. from general society mm -hmm. such that 
within our super yachting ecosystem, uh, we we see the yachts, we acknowledge the yachts, mm -hmm. we are amazed by the yachts, mm -hmm. we're passionate about the yachts, but outside our, of our ecosystem, there is, a, there is a, a disconnect such that super yachting and yachting in general uh, becomes the preserve of the privileged few. Mm -hmm. And in, in so doing, it becomes a, a trope, if you will, for bad behavior. You can just say that the amount of coverage that our industry gets, not all of it's good, mm -hmm. admittedly, some of the, 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 the mainstream media coverage, and I've written mm -hmm. about that mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. But I think the appetite's there. I think we still are interest, very interested in boats, but I think we still view super yachting has got its own little kind of sphere around it. It's almost ring-fenced as being this. But super yachting was around, uh, you know, You've mentioned that. Yeah, it's, and super yachting has been around forever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for, from at least in the modern era, from the mid-1850s. It's the problem that we called it super yachting, is that when we started to label it, and, as opposed to being it was nautical, it was something that required a lot of training and, and passion. Then when we called it super yachting, is that when we started to... But when do you think we started calling it super yachting? The word super yachting, I'm going to guess here and say the 1970s. Um, you're about, a, you, you're, you're about you know, 70 years too late. Uh, from my own research, mm -hmm. the first iteration of the word super yacht was written in The Economist in 1912. What, what was it referring to? It was referring, it was, it was a report on uh, Lloyd George's budget of the day. And what the article said is that we have a super tax, we have super dreadnoughts, we have and super we cars, have super and now we have super yachts. And that was 1912. Mm -hmm. And the word got picked up and was used repeatedly from then up you know, through the 1930s and onwards. Sebastian, nice to see you. Ciao, nice Martin. to be here in the shipyard for my first ever time in Livorno, which is crazy. Welcome. After 30 years in the market. Um, yeah. How's life? Very good, very good. Busy, yeah. I have to say, super busy since uh, a couple of years. Since they close the factory, our prime minister show up in the TV at 8 p.m. of the night. I say, dear, dear Italians, everything is closed starting from tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh my God. And then, let's say, we start with this and then went up to where we are today. Yeah, and where are we today? Well, today we are in a position where we do not expect to be. We are in a position where uh, we got a, the longest portfolio of our history, I think. Uh, not, not only in terms of uh, value, mm -hmm. but also in terms of delivery time. Yes. So, that is a good thing, a good news for a sales guy like me, but it's also a complicated thing to explain to clients because when they come here now, all excited, they want the boat tomorrow, as always. Yeah. So it's difficult to explain this and put the things one after the other to explain them that you need to wait till 2025 or whatever. Mm. In terms of that, that waiting time, what is the alternative? My, my, my fear is there's an alternative out there, which is, other shipyards who will not deliver because of their sort of capacity or their skills, yes. etc. Yes, the alternative could be buying somewhere else, but of course, I will not send the client away. No, of course, no one's sending a client away. I'm just saying when they can't get what they want here, and other yards are emerging out of the grave, if you like, That's we have the risk. <laughs> <laughs> we have the risk. Yes, no, no, the, it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. Uh, I think you know all of them, and you are visiting some of them in those days. So they are, the, the, some of those are emerging, yes. And in this market, there is space for everyone. Mm. On the other side, let's say the way we act is, okay, don't go on other shipyards, stay with us, and let's find interim solution like charter, like second dance, or one of our trade-ins. Yeah. So we can, we can try to find alternatives to keep them focused on the main target. Of so is that something that's really active now in terms of alternative solutions? Yes. So chartering existing fleet or new fleet members. Exactly, okay. exactly. This is super active and uh, we are also pushing, exist, let's say, new buyers to take uh, the boat commercial in order to have this possibility. Say, okay. You don't know, in the future maybe you will consider this as not 
let's say, a way to make money, but to cover your cost. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of like sort of your strategy now, is that going to be more of a long-term plan as well to say, we need to make sure we have a fleet available for everyone to try before they buy? Uh, we, are, we are aware of what is the fleet uh, around the world because being, let's say, having delivered uh, almost 400 units in, across, across the time, uh, we know what is available and what is the best boat to charter in each area. So uh, we suggest them where to go and look at. Yeah. Yes. Would that ever become an in-house service? It's an idea we have on the table since a while, I have to yep. say, but so far there are very good companies uh, doing so, offering this service, so, and the majority of our buyer comes here with a professional, uh, a professional broker that offers that service as well, so we don't want to go in competition. Okay, now, so looking at the, so the future being full service companies where they take care of everything for a client uh, from start to finish, it's something I think a company your size and scope has the potential to really lead the market in. Yes, it's, it's on the table, as I said, uh, not in a, in a way to be um, a kind of source of profit or not the, as a main scope, but also only as a source of service yes. to, keep, to give a 360 degree service to the client yeah. and to keep them in the family like we are doing with uh, our division called Yotik, mm -hmm. where the client can go there, sit down and have everything which is owner supply, which is not part of our main scope of supply as a Benetti, as a builder, sure. but they can buy everything in one place. So it's one place shopping. Yeah. Yeah. So let's look at the crystal ball, All right? Uh, 2030. Long, uh, yeah. You say it's a long time away, but I think it's actually very close to where we need to be heading. What are the clients asking for today that you think we need to be ready for in the future? In terms of propulsion, the, the sort of hybrid, all these technology talks about sustainability, is that really the client's driver? Or Because I hear so many times, Sebastian, the, the client's not asking for it, but are they? You're in the sales world, so are they asking for greener, cleaner, more efficient product or just what we're selling? Uh, yes, they are more than in the past. Not all of them, okay. to be honest. Uh, sometimes I got the feeling that it's more their team asking for it than the client okay. himself. Uh, but there is much more attention to it. So there is much more, much more attention to the environment we're living so for, to all the levels. So all the owner team and the owner himself, they are focused with this. Uh, so demand of not only propul hybrid propulsion, diesel electric, uh, new kind of propulsion and so on are on the table and are on the table of every yard uh, yes. you, uh, you will visit, uh, but also demand about fabrics, kind of new materials, uh, um, ecological way of building the boat and some, some are sometimes also demand, okay, when this boat will be at the end of its life, mm -hmm. how I can they say, is this recyclable yeah. or not? Yeah. So those questions are uh, more often around the table during a negotiation or uh, simply during the lunch with, uh, with a potential buyer. So yes, the reply is yes, even though there is no so, so much knowledge mm. of those information today in our, in our industry uh, from the buyer side. Of, co of course, we, of we offer uh, plenty of solution, even the, as, as I said, the, the material, how they are made, the, the, the fabrics, how they are made uh, in order to be clean the cycle of production and the cycle of recycling. Uh, do not talk about all the kind of different propulsion you offer. Um, just for you to know, today 95% of the quotation uh, we, are, we, are, uh, we are dealing with over 70 meter are hybrid. We, I mean, in media, we see all sorts of designs, yep. you know, and cutting through that is kind of tough because some of it, you just one look at, you're like, well, that's going to fall over. But then some of the other ones, you've got to push the boundaries, right? And some of the wind kind of solutions people are coming up with, the wing sails, I think, is pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. Dyna rig's great, but... Dyna rig's awesome. The VLP stuff's coming out is really, really good. Um, no, I mean, obviously you've got to try and get people to sail more, don't you? And, and yeah. realise that actually a 3,000, under 3,000 tonne boat like Black Pearl actually is 
better than an 80 metre under 3,000 tonne boat for the yep. environment. Right? Yeah, yeah. And you get the same comfort, you get the same everything. You get and you've a got nice the... swimming pool, you get a lovely big lounge, you get all the stuff yeah. that a big motorboat has, or an under 3,000 motorboat has, except you know, your running costs, uh, Black Pearl last year was 2.6% of the value of the boat. Not 10, not 15, yeah. not, you know, so where do you go? What do you want as an owner? And a similar tonnage so. in a motorboat, you're massively overpowered, churning yeah. through fuel, and, and you're doing through everything. a maximum of 17 knots, mm -hmm. max, and you're cruising most of your life at 12. Yeah, and your Black fuel Pearl, consumption at 17 yeah. knots is about astronomical. Yeah. And Black Pearl sails at 15, 16, 18, has done 24, and is predicted to do 28, 30 and zero fuel so what, what they, do you want but then do we have to convince i mean the the really top top end of their ownership market and the ones that have got the money to take the risks yep how i don't know you frame that because sailing if you love sailing sailing's great right yeah. but if you don't it sucks yeah. yeah and and trying to convince someone you know to, to to make that step do we have to reframe it and not call it a sailing boat right like you you almost yeah i mean that's, well that's a bit harsh isn't it i think we just need to let them know that it's just as comfortable. In fact, yeah. it's more comfortable. You know, you sit at, on a motorboat and you go to sea and you do that. Well, you can have your zero speed stabilized, but you're still going to do this. You feel terrible, yeah. You know, and on a sailing boat like Black Pearl, you heel over 10 degrees and you sit there and you're trucking along with no noise, 16 knots. Yeah. And that's it. Just, and the gin and tonic's going to be just fine at 10 degrees, you know, and the glass of wine will sit there and you can still sunbathe and you can still do all of that stuff, but you're not burning any fuel. Yeah. So, um, and that's probably, I mean, that's the, the real kind of sustainable option, right? Is, yeah. is literally not burning any fuel. It's not yeah. converting, convert, converting diesel into batteries at sea and then staying silent in port. Is, yeah. is and, I, and I really believe that there is a place with, um, you know, a lot of boats now, Baltic and Southern Wind and obviously mm -hmm. Ocean Co with the regeneration, Black Pearl. And I think the new one that Bezos is doing, I think that has regeneration as well. I'm pretty I've sure they copied that. what we've got. Um, so. I see no reason why a sailing yacht, any size, well, anything from 20 meters up, yeah, yeah. should be regenerating. Mm -hmm. And if it's like Black Pearl, when we're regenerating at anything over 16 knots, mm -hmm. we have excess power, like lots of excess power. You know, we've had 480 kilowatts put back into the bus, and we're only using 180, right? So we have excess power. So when you have excess power, make hydrogen. Elena, it's great to be back in the sun and, and it's good to be back in, in Italy. And I'm, I'm sure it's great for you guys to have, you know, face-to-face -face events again. Yes, what a glorious day and yeah. what a glorious event we'll, again. We'll, we'll pretend, <laughs> it was sunny when we arrived and it's sunny now, so we'll, it was sunny the whole time. Yeah. We're very happy to be back again with captains and companies together. We really felt that they enjoyed to be again together, even if with a little bit smaller numbers than before. But mm -hmm. it's a great signal of coming back together, doing business, doing networking. And it, it, it is actually our aim. Yeah, and I think a lot of people thought that when the pandemic, everything was going to go virtual. You know, people said it's the end of boat yeah. shows and people said it's the end of events as we knew them, but I don't know, do you see us returning back to, to, to the large scale events? Is that the plan for next year as well? Yes, we're planning, we're already started planning with, of course, the Super Yacht Group, uh -huh. who, uh, our media partners uh, in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we're planning in the next late spring to come again together in large numbers again.